I ran all the Orbea Orca model codes through the Enigma machine to see if I could work out what the heck they all mean. In this video, I'm going to show you what I worked out. And if you want to find out what Limford Christie running in a pair of hobnail boots has got to do with anything, then stick around. Ah! I quite like Orbea and I like the look of their Orca race bike. I think it looks pretty cool. But personally for me, the way that Orbea label their models, I find pretty confusing. My brain sort of glazes over with all the numbers and letters and, and stuff. And unless you look really closely, you don't really realise there's actually two, in fact, if not three different types of bike in here. And I'm going to show you what I mean. The caveat to this is I got all this information by studying the Orbea website. And if I've got any of it wrong, scream at me in the comments down below. And please, do comment because it really helps the channel. Now there's quite a few examples where I think if manufacturers could pull together a creative team and do some blue sky thinking, they could actually make our lives easier, come up with another name for some of their bikes. For example, if you're looking for a race bike, you wouldn't buy the Specialized LA, you would buy the Specialized LA Sprint. If you were looking for an endurance bike, you'd buy the Addict from Scott and not the Addict RC from Scott. And if you were looking for a more budget road bike that could maybe do a bit of gravel riding, you wouldn't buy the Contend SL from Giant. You'd buy the Contend AR, which has more off-road capabilities. And the Orca from Orbea falls into that category too. We've got this, the top of the range M10i Limited Power, 10 and a half thousand pounds. And this is made of OMX carbon and the shapes of the frame are very much tuned for aerodynamics. Likewise, the geometry of this bike is very much geared to being an all-round race bike. So this is a proper race bike. Now, if you go further down the Orbea Orca range and we'll fade through to this version here, this is the M20i team. You'd be forgiven for thinking that was pretty much the same. But if I fade back and forth, we can quickly start to see the differences here. The geometry changes are subtle, but it's more of an endurance bike, this one, as it's higher at the front. And at the rear of the bike, the profiling of the cross sections of the frame is much more bog standard round, as opposed to the race version, which is more aerodynamic. And we're told that this creates more compliance in the bike, but I suspect it's mm, slightly more to do with the fact it's probably cheaper. So that's the difference there between those two bikes. This bike is also made of the OMR carbon, which is a step down from the OMX carbon. So quite clearly, this is pretty much a completely different bike, but they obviously share DNA together. And by the way, if you are in the market for a new bike, you would be crazy not to come here to bikeotic.com and compare the bikes you're looking at back to back. There's hundreds of bikes in the database all lined up. And if you can't find the bike you're looking for, drop me a message by clicking that button there and clicking on contact. Stick the URL of the bike that you want loaded up and I'll get it done as soon as possible. Now I've watched a few review videos on these bikes and in one of them they suggested this bike could take 35 mil tires. But I checked the PDFs that are on the Orbea website and for the whole Orca range they list the tire clearance as 32 mil. So if you know the answer to that, comment down below. So it's quite a similar situation in the specialized tarmac range. If you drop down to the much cheaper SL6 Sport version, you'll see that they also go to a round seat post and you lose the aerodynamic shapes that we've got here. In fact, specialized call it the SL6 Sport, but really if you compare it to the old SL6, it's actually not even an SL6. So they're definitely powering things back to hit their price points. Let's just get back to these Orbea Orca codes and I'll get through this as quickly as I can because it could be really boring, but they are all kind of confusing. The first one is PWR. When I initially saw that, I thought, oh, is that an electric bike? PWR for power, but of course it's not at all. PWR stands for power meter. So wherever you see PWR, that bike has a power meter included in the price. So that's pretty cool. That gets that one out of the way. M, search as I could, I could find no information about what the M stands for. So I'm going to assume that that means model. And like I say, if I've got that wrong, scream at me in the comments down below. Then we have a couple of numbers, 10, 11, 21. This is the tier of group set. So 10 and 11 is the top end group set. And I'm assuming that the I is for DI2. So this is a Shimano top tier group set. So Dura Ace DI2 and the E for ETAP, I'm guessing. So it's 11, E for ETAP. That's the SRAM Red ETAP access group set, top of the range. So then when we drop down to the 20s or the twos, that's the second tier group set. And again, E for ETAP. So this is the force group set and I for DI2. So that's the 
the old Tegra DI2 group set, which just leaves us on the end here limited. Now, as far as I can see, that is referring to the race spec frame and geometry and top end carbon. And when we come down here and hit team, that's actually referring to the lower end version of the carbon frame with the slightly more endurance geometry. And that remains true until we get down to the M30i. And as you can see, that's not limited or team. And what that actually means is the fork goes from what is on the team, which is a full carbon fork. It goes down to an aluminium steerer. So if you like, that's the third level of the frame set that you can get in the Orca. And that applies to the 30i, the M20, M30, M40. Again, the i being DI2. So this here is the Shimano 105 DI2 group set. Okay, so hopefully I didn't bore you to death with that. But once you understand all that, it makes the Orbea Orca range much easier to navigate. So what do you get if you compare the absolute top of the range, which is this one that we've just looked at? It's the M10i Limited Power. So we've got a power meter. We've got the OMX Carbon. We've got the race geometry. We've got the Durace DI2. And this is 10 and a half thousand pounds. That's top of the range. What do we get if we go for the bottom of the range? You get this one, the M40. We fade back and forwards there. We've obviously got the more endurance geometry. We've got the round tubing. We have the Tiagra 10 speed group set as opposed to the 12 speed electronic Durace group set. And it's 2,299 pounds, which is 8,200 pounds cheaper. And if we line up the spec for these two bikes, as I said, you've got the OMX Carbon versus OMR. You've actually got an OMX fork on the expensive version. And like I say, you've got the carbon blades, but the aluminium steerer on the cheap version. We've got the power meter, no power meter. On the racier version, you've got the 5236. And on the cheaper version, you get 5034. So it's more geared to a uh, sort of endurance rider. Likewise, the cassette 1130 on the expensive bike and the 1134 on the cheaper bike. You get a nice set of Vision 40 carbon disc wheels on the expensive version and you get just what is described as the Orbea wheel on the cheap M40. So that's going to be a heavy aluminium wheel, right for a bit of an upgrade. Pretty much as far as I can tell, every single component is completely different. So even though they look quite similar, you're definitely getting very different bikes. And it's a shame, but Orbea don't list their weights. That would be really handy to know the difference in weight between these two bikes. So you may have noticed I didn't mention the tires, which are obviously very different on those two bikes. So let's get back to Linford Christie and his hobnail boots and it's a real shame but the cheap or if you like cheaper Orca is it actually at the end of the day none of these bikes are cheap it comes with a set of Vittoria Zafiro tires now on bicycle rolling resistance not even the version that comes on that bike because they haven't actually tested that one but the Pro G plus 2 folding version comes in at 15.2 watts now actually on the M40 it comes not with the Pro G plus 2 at all it comes just with the Zafiro V I think it's called and it actually comes with the steel bead so it's not even a folding tire and they weigh in at 380 grams so we could probably imagine it's going to be up towards the 20s so before you've even got your bike out the box you're already given away practically 40 watts to the more expensive bike so you're definitely going to want to change the tires and if i remember i'll stick a link down below to the gp 5000s from continental because you're definitely going to want to upgrade the tires amazingly the m30i which is 3599 pounds also comes with those same tires the Vittoria Zafiro V Rigid so you're paying big bucks for your electronic group set but one would probably argue that once it's in a gear it's saving you zero watts in fact in some instances it will be heavier than your mechanical group set so it's actually costing you watts and then it's got a set of 10 quid tires on it which is costing you many watts so that seems like a weird trade-off to me and it bugs me a little bit that manufacturers do that I know they've got to hit a price point but at the end of the day for this type of money stretching out to 100 quid for the tires seems well, this bike deserves to come with some decent tyres. Let's just say that. And it's not just Orbea that do this. Lots of manufacturers do it, but it doesn't seem to be the area to scrimp on to me. There we go. Rant over. So into the Ranger, I've loaded up the Scott Addict RC, which we looked at the other day. I made a video on that if you want to look that up. I've also loaded up the Canyon Ultimate and then the Orbea. Now for me, I'd want to look for a bike around the three and a half grand mark. And it does seem that my three and a half grand price point is getting very old fashioned very quickly because it's right down here. So I seem to be expecting to buy a bike in the very low end of the price range. I really want to pay that much, but there we go. So clearly I won't be buying another Scott Addict RC because that's now well out of my budget. So let's assume I wouldn't go for the very bottom of the range aluminium steerer. I mean, it's hard to say that without actually riding these bikes, but 
but let's just assume we wouldn't go for that one. We're kind of choosing between the M20 team and the M20 team with a power meter. And for only another 200 quid, you get the power meter. So yeah, I think I'd go for that one. The M20 team power of Tegra Mechanical. Or maybe I'd be drawn to the Canyon Ultimate CFSL8 3199. And if we just open that up, it is the version with the exposed cables, I guess. But it's a pretty good price. And that also comes with the 4i power meter. But that does seem like a pretty good deal. So how do you go about buying an Orca? Well, I thought I'd have a crack at it. And the first thing it asked me to do was fill in a form, which I didn't really fancy doing. But I did look on their store locator and they have one of these in stock at Leisure Lakes, but it is 100 miles away from me. So I can't really go and have a look at it. I would have to buy it and have it delivered to my home. The other thing you can do, which I had a lot of fun with, is use the Orbea Mayo part of their website where you can configure colors and different components and decals, put different wheels on. And it was great fun to play with. And I thought this looked pretty cool. The only problem was when I went to press buy, it said it was unavailable. So if you've used that yourself, let us know down below how you got on with it and whether it turned up exactly how you expected it. So that's about it for this video. And I'll leave you with this. I get asked quite a lot to put bikes straight from the factories into my database. Unfortunately, the likes of Elves and Windspace don't seem to put photographs of their complete bikes on their websites. If you happen to know where there are some photos of these bikes that are made up, nice side views, high res photographs, then let me know. And if you happen to work for these factories, then get in touch. Let's get you in the database. Okay, so if you like this video, give it a good old thumbs up. And like I say, put some comments down below because that really helps on YouTube. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click on that bell thing. Don't really know what it does, but apparently that helps too. Until next time. Time.